my Beretta. It's a 94 Z26 with FE3. Uh, it has manual windows, power locks, air conditioning, which was a somewhat rare option. Today is probably my last day with the car, which I'm super sad about, but just don't have the storage room to continue to keep it. Uh, it is the first turbocharged car with a 3100, uh, especially with the factory automatic 4T60E still. I did it back in 2005. So factory engine all the way down to the long block. Did the intake manifold gaskets, upgraded injectors, so the fuel rail's been TIG welded, has a little line going over here for the fuel pressure gauge inside. This filter here goes back to the rear valve cover for the crankcase ventilation. Has a Reman alternator on it and a new old stock air conditioning compressor because those went bad otherwise factory power steering pump, factory water pump. Factory uh, spark plug wires, aftermarket spark plugs of course. I think they're R42s, so a little bit cooler. Uh, brake fluid's been flushed. This line that comes off the back, that's for the boost gauge. Uh, so the turbo sits right here. It is a T3 T04B V trim with a 0.63 AR exhaust housing, custom built by Blast Performance. I did all of the intake tubing, so there's an AEM dry flow filter down in the factory location. It comes up a couple bends, three inch tubing to the compressor, comes out two inch bend, two inch custom made tubing, comes down through a custom, custom hose here. It's a two inch formed custom hose goes down through it makes multiple bends to get down below the headlight comes over to a bar and plate intercooler three inch thick I think it's 26 inches long anyway then it comes back over here it has a 180 degree bend comes back over this is two and a quarter inch tubing goes around multiple bends through here in order to clear all the factory hood latch components without changing anything. This goes right behind the headlight there through another factory hole. Have a uh, uh, Bosch blow off valve here. Well, recirculation valve I should say. Bell uh, flex joint here comes over the compressor housing into the intake manifold uh, so then the fuel comes out the fuel rail goes down up to this Vortec SFMU that's been like everything about it has been somewhat changed it has a watt key engineering spacer on it to try and reduce the pressure so it runs about 20 psi as I'm driving it and then once it gets into boost, it more than doubles it. I mean, it, the highest I've had it is about 84 PSI. That's just because it's still running on a one bar MAF sensor, and then it returns back out and to the factory return line. The factory pressure line actually burst during the initial startup, so that had to get replaced. The person that I bought the SFMU from had assembled it backwards, essentially causing it to not open at all. So it went over 100 PSI and then burst the factory line. 
still has a factory FE3 struts on it and they work great still. Factory rims. I love these things. Saw blades, salad shooters, whatever you want to call them. Kumo 225s. That was my first, one of the first things I did to the car because I thought the 205s, I don't like how close they are to the same size because these are 16 by 7s and I didn't like how you could basically curb them without trying. The factory door panels are in pretty good shape. There's a couple of small issues but that's it. Factory seats are pretty much mint. I mean the bolsters are nice and sturdy. Uh, all weather floor mats are on top of the factory floor mats. Carpet's in really good shape. Dash has no bubbles. Has an aftermarket Pioneer radio. This switch right here shuts off the uh, speedometer. In case before it was tunable to go over 112 miles an hour. Rear seat's in great shape. Really very few issues with the car at all. Factory tail lights, factory filler panels. Battery's relocated back here. It's a uh, dry cell. These parts here are the parts that the new owner is kind of requesting. So, extra center console cover, factory radio, factory front plate and the metal somewhat rare metal a pillar covers it has a silver line stainless tip the whole this is the car that got the first twin z performance exhaust it's all stainless steel it was polished but it's been driven a little bit car is really clean as far as rust goes very little rust uh, very was not driven in the winter a whole lot has Polk 6x9s in the rear and it has Polk 4 inch in the front the uh, driver's side door panel has this one spot where the seat belt kind of got tangled up in there that was before I got it but once again super clean no rust I mean just incredibly clean car uh, this spot is from when the factory put this rocker the ground effects on it actually was slightly bulged here so when the car got keyed I had it fixed so it doesn't rub there anymore but that's from the door rubbing even though the door doesn't say uh, carbon fiber a pillar that I did a long time ago with a boost gauge and a fuel pressure gauge just about to 66,000 miles I've been driving it a lot to make sure that everything's in good condition for the new owner driver's seat I mean look look at all this is not like mushroom down at all you don't see those very often anymore. Anyway, so there is the car. Shut everything up here. A rare time when I don't have all of the uh, sun shades and everything else in the car putting it down for a second last time to look at that setup then it's a uh, hoods all custom to factory hood that was rust free
factory GT G's GTZ grill off of a 91 I believe This car once raced Rex Weatherford's turbo GTZ back when this car was stock though. So it was a quick loss. And I forgot to say that this car is original paint besides the driver's side door and the hood and a small amount of the front fender. Drives pretty much identical to when it did when it was OEM, except for way more power. Oh, I forgot. It has a stall converter, which you can tell immediately upon hitting the gas. So those two bolts are to hold, keep the front passenger seat from sliding out so right now it's they're in there because I used to take it all a lot when I went drag racing factory cigarette lighter and then do you, any of you guys still have the factory carpet in the bottom of the center console
airport.